Good morning. It's so cold. The fan, the fan on this thing is super loud, so I turned, I just turned it off. I was like, I'm going to sleep. I can't have this thing come on and off and wake me up throughout the night. And I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, that's a free time. So I'm in Toronto. This probably looks very familiar because I'm back at the Ace Hotel, <laughs> which also means no coffee. There's no coffee in this hotel. Dear Ace Hotel, if you ever want to reconsider, well, we have options. We can talk about it. There's a lot of different brands that we could put in. There's a lot of different styles of coffee. Like you pick. There's there's a lot of options here. Let's work on that, honey. <laughs> so I got in last night. I'm here for a super super quick little trip. Uh, I have an event today, an event in the morning with L'Oreal, which is exciting. So this morning I'm gonna head to the gym, and I put a tan on last night. I like literally got into the hotel, showered, put a tan on. This is why I'm happy that I packed boots. <laughs> so before I head to the gym, I gotta <laughs> rinse this off and then we'll go find ourselves some coffee on the way. I packed my little travel packet of the greens and the first time we had ordered it, we like, I don't know, we used someone's discount code and we had got a little travel, travel thing to shake it up in which is honestly very handy. And I'm gonna also use this as my water bottle today. Ugh. See, the more water you add, the less of that taste you get. But then the more water you add, the more you have to drink, you know? Ready to go. Brave the snow. Look at my face from the wind and the snow. <laughs> it's so cold. It's always the wind that just like smacks you, but. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, I'm here at the, at the gym. Okay, I just got back <laughs> from the gym. <laughs> oh, I stopped at Impact, got my coffee, bless. And I also got their little, this is the Victory Bowl. And I added chicken and it's really, really good. We got pickled beets, pickled onions, sweet potato, chicken. Mm, it's such a good bowl. I actually... All this last week, I was making my kind of copy of this at home because it's so delicious. And I pickled some red onions as well. Like I just never realized how easy it was to do that. And it's so good and makes everything taste amazing. If you like pickled onions, like dude, add it to everything in your life because it is so good. Except where's the tabbouleh? Oh yeah. And hummus? Mm. I've got exactly 19 minutes to get ready before I need to leave because <laughs> why I always do this to myself, I don't know. It's just, it's just the way my brain functions apparently. I have a new revelation about the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, okay? Here's the one, I literally almost used it up. It's so good, I have the shade four. And you guys, I put a fake tan on, which is why I'm using the shade four. Otherwise I use the shade two. And to be honest, I don't use the shade two all that much like it was pretty much relatively untouched and new like I usually always cycle my fake tans on or have been in the sun and you know I'd say like this year has been the most that I've gone without like putting my fake tans on in a while and I was using the shade too and I just noticed like my makeup would be off and I was like is it this foundation like what's going on and I realized that the lighter shade it's so bad like this shade shade four goes on like succulent heavenly juicy juice it's so beautiful it's so beautiful on the skin and I apply it with my beauty blender I can apply it with a brush like it's super versatile in its application whatever then I was using the shade two and like the first time I put it on it like wasn't blending out with my beauty blender and I was like that's weird I shall use the brush whatever and then the next couple times I used it I'm like what the hell is going on it just was like wiping chalky pigment on my face like wouldn't blend in the concealer wasn't sitting well on top of it I'm like this is not the beautiful skin foundation that I know and love and I realized like it just must be specific shades because sometimes some of you message me being like oh my god I hate the beautiful skin foundation like it didn't work for me and you know it just might be that unfortunate case where it could 100 percent be dependent on the shade that you're using so in my experience like the shade two was horrible it was horrible it's so weird but the shade four is so beautiful on me so just wanted to pass on that uh revelation to you because it is a recent revelation 
And just in case any of you have like specific shades where you tried the Beautiful Skin Foundation, you're like, what is she on about? This is terrible. And again, we could just have different skin. Like the foundation just could simply not work for you and that's so fine. But just so you know, I don't know if it was a bad batch or whatever, but you know, different shades have different pigments. So it might just be, might just be that the lighter shade was absolutely a no-go. Um, and yeah, that happened recently. So figured I'd share. <laughs> anyway, going in with the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. This is the shade Vanilla. I also have the lighter shade of this one and it's like really, really white. Like the difference between these two shades is very intense. So if you were in between, you might have to mix if you want to use it because um, even when I'm in my natural paleness, the, the shade up is still like quite white. So I would even still mix it, but the concealer itself is honestly so beautiful. I'm really happy I pulled it back out in the collection because it is just divine. I am using the Westman Atelier Biscuit Contour, honestly, because this is quite old. Like this is one of the original Westman Atelier products that I had bought back in the day and I'm just in those moments of wanting to shop my stash and use up what I have in my makeup collection. And because this is like natural makeup, um, I do fear its expiry would be more swift than perhaps others. So I've pulled this out and I'm adding it to my little project pan pile. And it is such a lovely, lovely shade for contour. So blending that out. I really want to keep putting the like Mary Phillips makeup hack into action, but when I'm you know, needing to do my makeup quickly. I feel like I just need to stick to what I know just in case anything goes awry. <laughs> like things can go awry on a good day. So let's just try to not tempt fate there and stick to what we know when we're doing our makeup. So I do want to keep practicing that technique and applying all the products underneath my foundation, but today is not that day. Whenever I pull a blush out, I feel like I tend to hyperfixate on that. Like I've pulled out the Elf Bora blush and now that's just the only blush I want to use, you know? Like you guys will see. If you guys have been with my channel, you'll know that there's the few blushes that I just constantly have on rotation and the few favorites. And this one's definitely one of them. It's so beautiful. I do just wish they would have more shades because it really is such an amazing affordable dupe for any other like cream blush on the market it applies so beautifully but you know obviously the the beautiful thing about the more high-end blushes the blushes that are not at the drugstore is just like the shade availability the shade range i find is just so much more vast i'd actually say that the she glam blushes are like the one exception to that because they do have so many shades for such an affordable price but yeah like products like the elf putty blush and the putty bronzer you know they're so good and they're such a beautiful dupe for anything but they just don't have many options but if you love a cool tone pink she's your gal i did not forget my lip liner nyx nude beige plus i'm doing my makeup right now and my skin is peeling away there's absolutely nothing i can do about this but i have been using a new skincare product at night and the result of that is my face is peeling away and i just put on my makeup i was hoping that this wouldn't happen but alas it has and oh my god if anyone looks at me up close they're gonna be like why are you at this makeup event you look ridiculous. I'm going to be like, it's not me. <laughs> it's the threat. No one. <laughs> I brought the Revlon Lustrous Shine Lipstick in the shade 006, Sparkling Honey. I didn't know if I wanted something. I'm either going to do this or a lip stain. I'm going to see how I feel. We probably don't need to add to the dryness and the peeling by putting a lip stain on, but just in case I wanted a bit more color, I also brought my Victoria Beckham Sherry Lip Stain. So I'm not going to do anything too crazy on the eyes. I brought my little Inglot trio here. I'm just going to use the middle shade and I'm literally just going to put that all over the lid. My, like even my eyelids are peeling. This is so horrific. Oh my God. You don't notice it kind of until you put makeup on <laughs> because then it just has pigment to pick up on and you're like, oh God, oh no, why am I peeling away? Shiseido Aura do. Just for a little sparkle, why not? Put that on top. I love to do this just on top of like one eyeshadow shade. I think it has the most lovely effect. Just a little barely there hint of shimmer. I bought two products at Sephora before I left. Um, I refilled my Estee Lauder Double Wear Mascara. You guys, you know I've been raving about it on and on. This has changed my life. It's magical. My other one was dying, so we have refilled her. No smudging in sight when you use this mascara. And then, you guys, I saw that they have a travel size of the Givenchy powder, okay? They only had one shade though. This is the number one. I use the shade three, which is the rose. This is the purple one. So again, I don't advise this. I never advise using a new product when you are traveling, okay? But how cute is this little travel container? This is everything I wanted from the Givenchy powder. And I have to say, this was 51 
Canadian dollars. And I was actually with Armine when I was buying this. Sorry, I'm just gonna be testing this out as I speak. Let's hope the purple one, I feel like the purple one will have like a really nice brightening effect. So I wasn't worried about it. Let's see, but my skin is also just so, oh my God, yeah, it's so dry right now, you guys. I'm literally peeling, oh my God, it's so horrible. Anyway, I was with Armine and she was like, holy crap, like that's the powder you're using, like it's so expensive. I'm like, I know, I know, it's really hard. It's hard for me to say like, yeah, this product is so worth it. Like obviously it's only worth it if it's something that is within your budget. I would never, ever, ever say to spend money on something that you can't afford or that's gonna stretch you thin, especially when it comes to makeup. Like it's not necessary. Obviously I know that from the outside I'm using this powder and I'm like, holy crap, this is the most magical powder I've ever used. And it's because it is, like in terms of its effectiveness, it is the most smoothing, the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen under my eyes. But full size product is also over $70. Like that's, that's insane for a makeup product. And I know that the prices are rising all the time. Like the, the prices of makeup as we know it, even from like 10 years ago when I started you know, working at MAC, like all the prices have gone up so significantly. That's not something we can stop, but it is still just makeup. So please like never feel pressured. If it's not something that works within your budget, then never feel pressured to buy 10 blushes five different powders, 20 different mascaras, like only buy what you need and what you can afford. Of course, of course, I just wanna say that because I know the prices of a lot of these beauty products can be can be so insane and I know that it's getting out of hand and I just wanted to make that note. Like I recognize I'm using this powder and I will, I will do my best to try and find a dupe, but also like I'm using it because I have it and you know, especially when I'm getting ready for events and whatnot, like it's the best one that I have in my collection and I'm gonna keep using it. But. All that to say, only if that works for you. Uh, sorry, I am just doing a little top of the Laura Mercier. All that sparkles just because this is kind of like, like I'm using it kind of like a highlight. It's got quite a glow to it. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I just added a bit more of the Benefit Brow Gel. And I think that's gonna be it for makeup, guys. Ooh, that's my look. <laughs> so for my outfit, this is the skirt that I bought vintage shopping in Paris, if you guys remember. I've got my little high Zara boots on. And then I wanted to do like the little elastic band hack. I've, I've been meaning to do this for such a long time, but I keep forgetting. I sewed together a little elastic that I bought off of Amazon. And I want to do that thing that the cool girls do where they put the sweater over it, you know, to have a little overhang. I'm kind of scared to be testing this out for an event, but it's kind of a nice way to get that like crop sweater effect with your regular turtleneck. It's like a little two-in-one. Did that work? I need to check in the mirror. I also brought my lint roller. Let's get these linty lints off the sweat hole. Got my lovely little hoops, my Costco hoops. And then I packed my little Saint Laurent, what do you call this? Messenger bag. I'm gonna bring all my things with me. Wallet, headphones, tissue, lip balm. We've got the lipstick. I don't know if you guys, the camera never picks up on this, but I'm gonna do my best to like literally hide my chin with the turtleneck because it's, I, can't, I don't know if you can see it, but like my skin is literally flaking off. Like there's nothing I can do to even remotely help the look of that when it's peeling away. <laughs> yeah, that's the look. Thank God, honestly, like whenever I get my hair done, that's always the best blow. Like Armine, when she gives me a blow at the end of my haircut, it always lasts the best. Like my hair would have not looked like this after a workout had I tried to do that myself. So Armine, thank you for this moment. I'm just checking, yeah, the elastic, I think it worked. We just won't be raising our arms at all, but that's the look. I'm going to hail the Uber and head to the event. I ran into the event <laughs> and we had the presentation. They had a panel of dermatologists and they have people here from L'Oreal Paris taking us through demonstrations. So we're starting at the Hyaluronic Acid Lab and we're getting to play honestly, honestly. The serum feels amazing. And then they have a matching cream. They also have an eye cream. And I love it when we get to actually talk to the dermatologists and the scientists themselves. And like, we have over 4,000 scientists working in our labs across the globe. And I'm like, tell us everything you know. Bless. Okay, guys, I just got back. I had to call Dan and tell him everything that transpired because I was so, I was buzzing. Listen, I love events like this where it's not just fluff, it's not just a photo op, like obviously they had that. They had the cute little stations and they had ring lights set up for everybody. But I love it when they actually like 
try their best to tell you the science behind it. And I say that because you got to be given it in layman's terms if you don't understand. Like, I am not a scientist, so half the time when people are talking about, like, very, like, ingredient-specific, formula-specific things, I'm like, yeah, like, I'm, it's great that you're telling me that, but I don't really understand what that means. I just feel like my brain was just like a sponge, and we just learned so much, and I love it when they present it like that. So, basically, this event was for the launch of the new vitamin C, the Revitalift vitamin C from L'Oreal and it's adding to their Revitalift line. So they have the Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum and then they also have the Revitalift Cream. They also have an eye cream, which to be honest, I haven't used them. I will be though, I'll test it out tonight. But this is, this is what was being launched. And I just feel like we got so much information, we got so much access. Okay, so first of all, they had two dermatologists there who were speaking on behalf of the product and the ingredients and the efficacy and whatnot, but they also had some of their team members from France, from, oh my God, I forget what her actual like title was. So she's a biochemist and global scientific director at L'Oreal Paris. From what I understood, she's basically the liaison from their like research scientists and she takes that research and what they've learned and figures out how to apply that to new product development. And she was literally there, like, talking to us and presenting. And she's just so smart. You know, when someone's just, like, oozing... <laughs> I was about to say wiseness. <laughs> oozing wisdom. <laughs> and they were telling us all about the line. So it was really, really cool. We learned so much. Let's just talk about L'Oreal as a whole for a second. Because I think it's fascinating. Obviously, this is a L'Oreal Paris-specific product launch but l'oreal group as a whole obviously owns like so many brands like l'oreal luxe like l'oreal owns skinceuticals they own ysl armani so many brands under the l'oreal umbrella i also didn't know that they had nyx and maybelline too how crazy anyway so they have I think they said they had over 4,000 research scientists globally. They have 21 different research labs, and three of those labs have what they've created called EpiSkin. And they had samples of the EpiSkin that we got to play with. That's literally what we were doing at this thing. And basically, they've created like actual living human skin regenerating from other cells, blah, blah, blah. They talked about that whole process, but this is what they use at three of their research labs to test products on. And it was so crazy to see that. It was literally like, like my skin's like flaking off my face right now. And I'm like, that is my skin in this little Petri dish. And so they test on real skin that is generated, this Epi skin. It's, it was so cool to see. And also knowing that like all these L'Oreal brands kind of have access to that information, access to that research, access to those labs super cool to learn about that that is like something that would be incredible if they were ever to do like an influencer trip to like go see those l'oreal labs in action that would be amazing i remember a few years ago we went to um one of the clinique labs and that was really really cool just super informative and what i also didn't know is that l'oreal has not been testing on animals like as a brand since 1989 and that was 14 years before the EU banned it, like made it law that you can't test on animals, which I thought was a really fun fact. And then they also said that as of 2021, they have been um, working with and like pushing China to stop animal testing. And they've basically been pitching their epi skin, this regenerated skin technology uh, to replace that and to try and urge them to stop the animal testing. So there being um, big voices and advocates for that, which is so cool. It was so cool. Oh my God, I get goosebumps. I love learning all these fun little facts. So that was really, really interesting. And so when it comes to the actual vitamin C, because I use the SkinCeuticals Floritin CF, so and it's 208 Canadian dollars. And obviously the price difference on this is huge. I think this one retails for 41 99 Canadian, but a few of the different websites had it for different um, prices. Even right now on Shoppers, it's showing that it's on sale. So depending on where you buy it, it could be different. Don't quote me on that price, but obviously huge, huge price difference. So I was like, what is the difference in this? So just basing off of like the descriptions on the websites that you guys can see, the Floritin CF from SkinCeuticals is made with 10% pure vitamin C, the L-ascorbic L acid, and then it's mixed with 0.5% ferulic acid. The promises, the benefits are exactly the same between the two and even sometimes I'm unsure like I, I laugh with Dan sometimes I'll be putting the vitamin C on and I'm like you know I don't really know 
what this is doing. All I know is that the dermatologists tell us that we need to use it. But basically the vitamin C as a product helps to protect, it's an antioxidant, so it helps with the environmental aggressors, blah, blah, blah. It helps with discoloration, obviously depending on the um, formulation, like what the L-ascorbic acid is formulated with will determine what other benefits that it might have. It helps with dullness of the skin, um, helps the skin discoloration, and it also helps with collagen collagen production so it's a really good product to use and you know dermatologists across the board no matter what brand they may or not be representing they always say like vitamin c the retinol and the sunscreen those are the three kind of like powerhouses that you can use for your skin so the l'oreal revitalift is 12 percent pure vitamin c vitamin e and salicylic acid i don't really know what the difference is but when i asked the dermatologist i was like what is the difference in the mixtures of these because obviously the, the mixture is different and he said that basically like skin ceuticals had been the front leader like they had conducted the research behind vitamin c and the stabilization of the vitamin c because apparently it's like a very difficult thing to stabilize and a lot of brands will like put vitamin c in but it's not actually doing anything because it's not properly stabilized blah, blah blah so they were really a pioneer in making vitamin c very effective and stabilizing it and making it amazing for skincare so he said that when all that research was done with their original like floritin cf ce ferulic that it was based on keeping your skin pH at a 3.5. And he said that their new research that's coming in is focusing more on keeping your pH levels at a six. So again, I don't really know what that means. I'm gonna ask them tomorrow because we get to go again tomorrow. <laughs> and I will be sure to just like streamline this information. But basically that this is like the newest thing. The SkinCeuticals vitamin C has been around for a while now. And he said that this is coming out with their new research and that's kind of the, the difference for that. He also said that keeping the pH at a higher level is less irritating for those with sensitive skin. So that was a cool little fun fact. Um, obviously I have yet to try the product. I can't speak on it from um, actually using it. But what I also loved about the presentation that they did is that L'Oreal Paris, the L'Oreal Paris brand, they specifically like wrote on the slide, like we are democratizing beauty and they want to make it accessible and affordable for people, which I thought was, it's just nice uh, when a brand is like saying that and making it a main point in their product development and whatnot. And so I do find it interesting when, when brands like this are owned by the same umbrella and they have access to the same things. It's like from a marketing standpoint and whatnot, I don't really know, <laughs> nor do I believe we'll ever really know unless you're like really behind the scenes, like what the true difference is, like what is the difference in in such a discrepancy in the price and the value of it. But it, it's exciting to know that they kind of come from the same place and to know that there is a much more affordable option. So that was really cool. I'm really excited to try it. And I just felt like we got a, a lot of valuable information today. So I'm excited to see what else we learn tomorrow. But that's basically why I was here. Here with L'Oreal, learning about the launch. And yeah, I love it when they just provide all the information. And that was the day. It's almost 6 p.m., which is crazy. That flew by so fast. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I need to order dinner, honestly. I'm in front of the light. I'm trying to block it. I'm sorry. But my dinner order just came in. I'm really excited. I ordered from Poquito. I was so excited because I wanted to find something like somewhat healthy, you know? I was like this or I was gonna go deep and get Maddie's patties, okay? And like die for the burger. And I'm like, be healthy, get some vegetables. And they had like poke bowls, but they also had build your own poke plate. Oh my God, it looks so good. It looks so good. And I just got a mix of literally everything. They had Hawaiian barbecue chicken, shrimp, creamy salmon poke, kimchi salad, then I got some more pickled beets and carrots on the side and then a little macaroni salad. I was like, this is heaven. This is really good. And it's like, obviously there's sauce and whatnot, but that looks divine. Also, I haven't talked to the vlog about this yet. I posted it on Instagram because basically like with DIY body, they have a little uh, Facebook chat group and people are always like posting their recipes and their favorite snacks and whatnot. And people were talking about these grenade bars. We saw them at Walmart, like on the shelves and tried a few flavors, but you guys, I ordered a whole box of this one flavor because it's so freaking good for anyone who loves white chocolate. I'm talking like Hershey's cookies and cream, okay? There's two flavors I love. Reese's peanut butter cups are my absolute nemesis and delight in this world, okay? And then I love white chocolate. Like Easter bunnies, my mom would always give me the white chocolate one. Like I don't wanna touch milk chocolate chocolate don't give me dark chocolate mm -mm. no no give me white chocolate that is my life this is the white chocolate salted peanut grenade bar and my god my god you guys it is so 
It's so delicious. I'm going to have this for dessert because it literally tastes like dessert. And you're getting 20 grams, right? 20 grams of protein. Protein bar and chocolate in one. It's so good. Oh my gosh. If you're looking for a new protein bar to try, it's delicious. And can I just say on that note, like random, but I w it's because it popped up when I was scrolling through Uber Eats, but I love movie theater popcorn, like triple layered butter, you know, you know, when you just have a craving, like I'm, I'm having like an intense craving for movie theater popcorn right now. And so I just want you to witness that I'm being strong today and ordering not my movie theater popcorn and Maddie's patties. Uh, I want my gut to feel happy, you know? I need some pickled things to make my, my gut a happy place. Anyway, bone apple teeth. Good morning all. Very early start this morning. I am, I am in a state and I desperately needed this coffee. I ran down and grabbed the coffee from the lobby bar. Gotta get ready for the second morning of the events i kind of just mossed honestly i talked to my mom for an hour and a half on the phone last night and we were talking about our genealogy and ancestry it was so random but i loved it and my mom had just gone home to visit my grandma and some family in nova scotia and they were like going through old photos and whatnot and ancestry like listen mormons are big on genealogy and ancestry okay so there's a lot of uh fun family facts there she was tracing us back guys scotland the uk germany like straight to little villages i thought that was very fascinating that's like a life dream of mine to like do a trip traveling to those old towns like tracing your family history back and seeing where you're actually from especially because i'm kind of a mutt like you know like i never really knew where i was actually from i think that'd be fun i know that's not a new concept whatsoever but that would be cool my mom and i were chatting about that last night and yeah anyway anyway that's so random i have coffee now i'm gonna get ready see you in a minute okay i left you hanging i had to run i was running late obviously we're back back at the science lab and we just had a presentation from the tiktok team and they were talking about best practices and trends on tiktok and whatnot it was actually really insightful especially for those of us who <laughs> do YouTube it's really nice to see that and hear from the TikTok team and basically now they've like opened up the time to make content with the dermatologist who's here Dr. Matt and kind of ask any questions and debunk myths all that good stuff so uh, that's very exciting I'm going to I'm gonna film a TikTok y'all but here's what I'm wearing don't look at me <laughs> Dr. Matt He's in the house, so we'll go ask our questions. Okay, so we're here with Dr. Matt at derm.life. At derm.life, yeah. At derm.life on TikTok. Yeah. Dermatologist from Calgary. So we just filmed a TikTok talking about the new L'Oreal vitamin C, obviously. And I wanted to clarify my little chat that I had with you last night on what is the significance, the difference between keeping your pH at the six and why that is special and different for the vitamin C. Yeah, so basically the first studies that were done on vitamin C showed you had a, a really low pH, like 3.5, for it to passively move through the skin. But since then, that was like 20 years ago, we've shown that essentially at higher pHs, you can still get active movement of vitamin C into the skin. So you don't have to make the vitamin C as aggressive in order for it to still get um, enough into your skin and so you still have the benefit from it. So a pH of six is a little less aggressive for your skin than a 3.5, but you're getting multiple modes of transport of vitamin C into your skin, so you still get the benefits from it. Okay, and then with the with this vitamin C, I used it last night, I used it this morning. Okay. It felt amazing. Amazing. I know that one of the main questions from the presentation uh, was that it contains fragrance. And so for people who are shopping this vitamin C, yeah. they might have more sensitive skin. Um, what's something that can be said about the fragrance and why is that still included in the product? Yeah, so I mean at the end of the day, if you have a known sensitivity to fragrance, it's something you should avoid in your products. And so. Uh, product containing vitamin C or with fragrance might not be the best for you mm -hmm. but in general fragrances are very broad so you might be sensitive to one fragrance and not another so it's still worth a shot but if you're of course becoming sensitive to it it's something that you shouldn't use yeah um, in general though like all these products are tested for sensitive skin to begin with mm -hmm. and that's no exception with the vitamin C serum so in general for people with sensitive skin it should be totally appropriate okay Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Dr. Matt, this has been lovely. Nice Thank to meet you, you. guys. <laughs> so
So I'm back from the event. It was a really great presentation uh, from the TikTok Canada team. And they were talking about like best practices, trends, like how to grow on TikTok, TikTok's plans, blah, blah. It was very interesting. Very, very interesting to hear uh, from the team themselves. And yeah, kind of incorporating that into like what's trending with skincare and speaking on how to best work with brands and like how important authenticity is and blah, blah. It was very cool. And obviously um, we were then given the time to film with Dr. Matt and he was also one of the dermatologists who was there presenting yesterday, um, speaking on the product. And we got to film our TikTok content, but he was so nice and yeah, I hope we we cleared up the chat on the vitamin C, which is very interesting. The more you know, guys, the more knowledge you have, the better, isn't it? So that was great. And then I just kind of ran back. I've been packing up my suitcase, getting ready to head out. But, but I do have a little bit of time. So I'm actually going to meet my girlfriend, Ellie. We're going <laughs> to, she was like, hey, I have a Pilates class at noon. I was like, perfect. I'll be there. So I just changed into my workout attire and I'm going to go join her. And then we're going to eat lunch and then I'll go to the airport. So perfect, what a day, what a lovely little morning this is already shaping up to be. Listen, I'm, I was still unwell from the Legree class, but I mean, this isn't Legree, but it's still a reformer Pilates. So we'll see if I survive. Wish me luck. I'm home, obviously. Got home from Toronto and failed to conclude yet another vlog, but just wanted to say toodaloo. I hope you enjoyed this. We learned lots in this vid, and I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video too. Um, obviously, it's nice to hear from the experts, and it's nice that we have access to that information and can share it with you here on the YouTube and on social media and whatnot. So if you like that style, if you would like more discussions with people who know what's up, <laughs> in their profession, more experts in their field. I think it'd be really fun to tie more of that into the content, especially when we're talking about skincare and hair care, things like that, that I might not necessarily know the deep ins and outs of the science, but there are people who do and we can uh, glean the knowledge from them. So uh, noting that for upcoming content for sure. If there's any other topics or like products that you would love deep dives on, I think that'd be really interesting to tie more of that into. The content so i hope you guys enjoyed and uh over the last little bit since being home from toronto i've been filming some fun things on tiktok and whatnot so i actually just this morning i literally filmed this makeup look if you wanted to see it but obviously lots to come uh on youtube so see you guys soon hope you enjoyed this vlog and i hope you're having a beautiful day bye